Have you ever wondered how your cell phone works? It's a question that can stop many in their tracks for it's easy to take for granted the small device that fits so snugly in the palm of our hands. This piece of technology, the cell phone, is truly a marvel of our modern world. In this bustling digital age, the cell phone has become an extension of who we are. It's our personal assistant, our gateway to information, our social hub, and so much more. But beyond its many apps and cool features, do we really understand what it is? Do we grasp the sheer magnitude of the technology that allows us to connect with anyone anywhere in the world at any time? Imagine this, you're in New York and you want to call your friend in London. You dial the number, press the call button, and within seconds, you're chatting away. But have you ever stopped to wonder about the journey your voice makes in that short span of time? It's not magic, but it might as well be. Your voice, a series of complex sound waves, is captured by your phone, converted into digital signals, and then sent thousands of miles across the ocean all in the blink of an eye. And the most amazing part, this incredible feat of engineering is performed by a device that weighs less than a bag of sugar and fits in your pocket. But of course, the cell phone is more than just a device for making calls. It's a multimedia powerhouse, capable of capturing high-definition videos, playing music, sending emails, browsing the web, and so much more. All of these functions are made possible by the intricate hardware and software that work together seamlessly within the confines of this compact device. So, how does this marvel of modern technology work? How does it manage to perform such a wide range of tasks with such efficiency and precision? To understand this, we need to delve into the intricacies of how a cell phone operates. At the heart of your cell phone is a powerful microprocessor. This tiny yet mighty component is the brain of your phone, and it's responsible for controlling all of its operations and functionalities. Think of the microprocessor as a city's traffic control center. It's constantly receiving and sending signals, making sure everything runs smoothly and efficiently. Just as a traffic control center manages the flow of vehicles on roads, the microprocessor manages the flow of data within your phone. It coordinates the actions of all the other hardware components, like the camera, the speakers, and the screen. But how does it work? At its core, a microprocessor is an integrated circuit made up of millions or even billions of transistors. These transistors work together to carry out the instructions of a computer program. When you tap an icon on your phone's screen, the microprocessor interprets this action and sends signals to the relevant components to open the app. Microprocessors also play a crucial role in managing your phone's power usage. They can change their operating speed depending on the task at hand. If you're just sending a text, the microprocessor will slow down to conserve energy, but if you're playing a graphics-heavy game, it'll speed up to ensure smooth gameplay. And let's not forget about multitasking. Your phone can handle multiple tasks at once, like playing music while you browse the web, thanks to the microprocessor. It's constantly switching between tasks, so fast that it seems like it's doing everything at once. So, in essence, the microprocessor is the heartbeat of your phone, it's what makes your phone smart. It's the reason why you can do everything from checking your email to navigating city streets, all from a device that fits in the palm of your hand. The microprocessor is just the beginning. Let's explore how a call is made. Making a call is as simple as dialing a number, but have you thought about what happens next? The journey of a phone call is a fascinating process that involves a complex ballet of technology and engineering. Firstly, as you speak into your phone, your voice, which is an analog signal, is transformed into a digital one. This process is called digitization. Your phone's microphone picks up the sound waves of your voice and turns them into binary code, a series of ones and zeros. This is the same language your phone and all digital devices use to process and share information. This binary code is then compressed to make it smaller and easier to transmit. The compression process is vital because it allows the vast amounts of data that make up your voice to be sent quickly and efficiently. Think of it as packing a suitcase for a trip. You want to fit as much as you can into a small space, so you roll your clothes or use vacuum bags to compress them. Once your voice has been digitized and compressed, it is then converted into radio waves by your phone's transmitter. These radio waves are then sent out into the world ready to be received by the intended recipient. But it's not quite as simple as that. The radio waves don't just travel in a straight line from your phone to the recipients. Instead, they're sent to the nearest cell tower, which then relays the call to a base station.
The base station is connected to a network of other base stations which together form a kind of digital highway, guiding your call to its destination. And voila! That's the journey of a phone call in a nutshell. From your voice, to digital signals, to radio waves, through cell towers and base stations, and finally to the recipient's phone. So that's how a call is made, but how does the person on the other end receive it? Well, stay tuned as we unravel that mystery in the next scene. It's time to introduce another important character. The Cell Tower. They're tall, they're powerful, and they're the unsung heroes of our daily conversations. But what exactly do they do? Well, the name gives away a lot. Cell Towers, or Cell Sites as they're also known, are the key players in receiving and transmitting our calls and data. Picture this. When you make a call, your cell phone changes your voice into a digital signal. This digital signal is then transmitted via radio waves to the nearest cell tower. This is where the magic begins. The cell tower takes this digital signal and passes it along to a network of towers, each one handing off the signal like a relay race until it reaches the tower nearest to the person you're calling. But the magic doesn't stop there. The receiving cell tower then sends this digital signal to the recipient's phone, translating it back into sound. It's this intricate dance, this relay race between towers, that enables us to hear and talk from thousands of miles away. And it's not just for voice calls. Whether you're sending a text, browsing the internet, or streaming your favorite show, it's all thanks to the diligent work of these cell towers. They handle millions of signals every day, working tirelessly to connect us to the world around us. But what makes them even more impressive is their ability to handle this enormous load without any human intervention. These towers are automated, using sophisticated technology to manage and prioritize signals, ensuring that our calls and data are transmitted smoothly and without interruption. So next time you pick up your phone, remember the magic of cell towers. They may be out of sight, but they're never out of action. They're the invisible threads that connect all cell phone users, the silent guardians of our daily communications. Cell towers are the invisible threads that connect all cell phone users. But how do cell phones connect to the internet? You may wonder. Well, it's all about data networks and connectivity, which are the unsung heroes in the life of your cell phone. Just as your voice travels through airwaves during a call, your cell phone uses similar principles to connect to the internet. Instead of voice, however, it sends and receives data packets, tiny bundles of information that flow back and forth between your device and the World Wide Web. The key player in this process is your SIM card. This tiny chip is like your cell phone's passport, identifying it to your service provider's network and enabling it to send and receive data. The SIM card contains unique information about your phone and your service plan, which is why swapping it out can change your phone number or even your carrier. Your service provider, in turn, has a crucial role in this process. Think of them as the bridge between your cell phone and the internet. They maintain the infrastructure, like cell towers and data centers, that transmit and receive these data packets. When you browse the web, send an email, or stream a video, your cell phone communicates with your service provider's network, which then connects to the internet. Your phone's ability to connect to the internet also depends on the type of data network it can access. The common ones are 3G, 4G, and now, the much-hyped 5G. Each generation is faster and more reliable than the last, with 5G promising speeds that make downloading a high-definition movie almost instantaneous. And it's not just about speed. These advancements in connectivity also enable new technologies and applications. Think about video calls, GPS navigation, or streaming services, which have transformed our lives in unimaginable ways. These would not be possible without the power of connectivity. So the next time you pull out your phone to check your email, remember the intricate ballet of technology happening behind the scenes. And that, in a nutshell, is how your cell phone works, connecting you to the world at the touch of a button.